I want to congratulate you and welcome you to the Financial Fitness Challenge. This is a five-day personal income acceleration sprint. Now, all of you in this program want to make a difference in your finances. You want to transform your finances. You want to end the financial struggles in your life. You want to end these struggles so that you will never have money worries anymore for the rest of your life. That was the journey I started a couple of years ago, and I'm very, very happy to share it with you. But first of all, nothing can change in your finances until three things happen. Until number one, you identify and address the psychological barriers that have held you back for many years. You are where you are today in your finances because of the psychological barriers, the beliefs, the ideas, the sort of negative experiences you've had with money that have given you this negative feeling you know, toward money and also affected your relationship with money. Secondly, you can't change or move the needle in your finances until you have found a very specific opportunity to build and scale your economic life. Opportunity is very important because if you don't have an opportunity, then there's nothing to build. So throughout this financial fitness challenge, we will be focusing on opportunity. There's another third element that is important before your finances can grow, and that is action, taking action, creating the action to move your life forward. Throughout the Financial Fitness Challenge, we will be helping you to achieve these three things. So, but I'm going to tell you how this all started, because this is my story, indeed, and my journey that I want to share with you. It's very practical. It was very transformational for my life, as you're going to see in a moment. And I believe that it is also going to be very transformational for you. So I'm going to tell you the origin of the Financial Fitness Challenge. But first of all, a little bit about myself. My name is Obo Awoke Obo. I started my career with Shell. Then Chevron came, offered something much better than Shell. I left Shell, went to Chevron. And then six years after, Shell came back and said, we want you back. And they offered something I couldn't say no to. So I left Chevron and went back to Shell. I'm a certified executive coach and also MBTI practitioner certified, all in the United States. One of the greatest privileges I've had in my career that's given me the skills, the confidence, the would I say bragging right to do what I do is the rare privilege to work with Stanford University through the Stanford Seed program. And in this capacity as Stanford Business Advisor, I worked with hundreds of businesses across Africa. And Stanford has the secret to scaling a business because Stanford University is the brain box of Silicon Valley. So you'll be getting a feel of that throughout this program. I'm passionate about people because God is about people, not about infrastructure. Of course, we need the infrastructure. We need all that. But I'm very passionate about people because if we get the people right, we'll get everything else in the society right. And so it is my ambition to raise unicorns who will lead Africa to, to prosperity in different areas. Okay, so how did the Financial Fitness Challenge all begin? So it was in June of 2012. I and a couple of colleagues of mine were working for MTN at the time. MTN had this business plan competition going on across the country. And then I was in the panel of judges with a couple of friends. We finished this work in Abuja and then we were to go back to Lagos where we were collecting the results and then getting the reports to empty end but just that morning something happened and i decided that i was going to visit my son who was schooling in abuja at the time at loyola in abuja and so i asked the protocol guys please could you move my name we also had another colleague i had also had another colleague wale 
who also needed to see his children at Loyola. So both of us said, please, could you move our names from that flight and put us in the evening flight so that we could go later? <sighs> and then the rest we heard was that that plane crashed, killed all our friends you know, who were in it. And um, for some reason, that was how I escaped that fatal crash. And I still feel very deep sorrow in my heart for my precious colleagues who had to perish in that flight. But you see, that experience did something to me as I was flying back days later to Lagos from Abuja. I kept asking myself, suppose this thing had happened. I wasn't afraid of dying per se, because my eternity is already secured in Christ. I wasn't afraid, but what gave me sleepless night was they thought around how I would have left my wife and my children. Economically speaking, things were bad at the time. I was owing banks, uh, millions of naira. I had no will. I had literally nothing, no money in the bank. And so the prospect that if I had died, that within months, my wife and my children were going to be living in the streets because they weren't going to be able to pay rent, they weren't going to be able to pay school fees, and perhaps the quality of life I had imagined for the children, the quality of education could never have happened. So that was the origin of the financial fitness. Every human being, and especially fathers, every human being needs to be financially fit. Every one of us needs to be financially fit because we never know when it's going to happen. All right, so I'm going to take you through how to make maximum profit from the financial fitness challenge. I have to warn you that this challenge could change your life in many ways, but it's going to give you only what you put into it. It's going to return the in proportion, the effort and the seriousness and the commitment that you put into it. So this is how to make the maximum profit from it. First of all, it is not a get rich program. It's not a get rich quick program. And many of you who follow my work know that I have no business with get rich quick uh, programs. And of course, actually, I do believe in getting rich quick. As long as the quick is anywhere from 10 years to 20 years, 30 years. Okay, so this is not a get rich quick overnight program. It's going to demand that you put in some commitment and some work in it. Okay, so this challenge demands radicality don't take it like a motivational seminar that's not what it is attaining financial peace is not for the casual and faint-hearted financial struggle is like pharaoh that doesn't let his captives go free so cleaning up the mistakes you made in 40 years the habits you have built in 20 years and 30 years it's not going to be easy it's going to be hard so don't be deceived, but at the end, it's worth it. Number one, dedicate 45 minutes a day to your future. It's not too much to dedicate 45 minutes for the next 45 years of your life a day so that you can focus on the exercises, reflect on the goals, and absorb each day's lesson. Make it a routine. This thing has been very, very carefully prepared, carefully orchestrated. So give it the reflection and the time it demands. Number two, keep a journal for all the exercises and the insights that you're going to be getting either from the videos or from the slides I'll be sharing and also from the plenaries that will be happening in the evening. Keep a journal, show up on time every day. This is really, really important because that energy in the room when it starts prepares you for the rest of the event and then if you jump in late, it may have been that minute you missed before that held the key to your breakthrough. Engage and network with your fellow challengers. Often I've discovered whenever we run the challenge that many times people gain a lot more in networking with one another, in uh, uh, mutually problem solving than they even get listening to me. Number five, complete every exercise because they build on each other. After every video like this one, I will give you a worksheet to help you to implement what you've learned for the day. 
make sure you complete the exercises be prepared and be present every evening when you are there be there every evening it's only five days after those five short days you will continue with your life stay open stay honest be very very vulnerable real transformation happens when you are open to new ideas so come in with a clear mind with an open mind because you are going to learn a lot set a clear intention for every single day each morning remind yourself of why you are doing this challenge set a daily goal say today this is what i'm going to become as a result of this challenge this is what i'm going to accomplish this is what my outcome desired outcome is at the end of today this intention can make all the difference in staying motivated so be prepared it's going to de demand radical pragmatism it's going to demand it from you be prepared okay the thing i want to quickly mention is about lifestyle your dream lifestyle and why this is very important in completing this challenge russell bronson said that the life you want the marriage you want the family you want are going to be fueled by the business you build this is important okay everyone needs seven hobbies one to make money one to enhance your physical health one to sharpen your mind one to express your creativity one to build connections with people and masterminding one to keep you spiritually grounded because if you are spiritually fractured everything else in your life collapses and then you need one to mentor and to impact others all right so lifestyle is an incentive because if you set out desiring the life you want to live a new testament writer said that jesus for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame this is exactly what happens when you visualize a dream lifestyle that is worthy of you that lifestyle will provide you the incentive for the daily effort the daily discipline that this actually requires from you so it's important to think about the lifestyle first of all and i want you to have that lifestyle that ideal lifestyle in mind as you complete the challenge okay this is my own example of my ideal lifestyle lifestyle is basically life lived in style in a certain style that you decide so some elements of my ideal lifestyle involve uh, all my bills are automatically paid from returns on my investment okay it involves that i have time to read to write to meditate to travel it involves i can work anywhere i want anytime i want in the world i am healthy i have strength and flexibility i am kind i'm courageous big thinking governments companies around the world consult me these are uh, the elements of my ideal lifestyle and i will encourage you to do yours and then the next question after de describing your ideal lifestyle is to ask in order for me to live this kind of life what has to be true today in other words you reverse engineer so you describe the ideal lifestyle you want you probably want to be a global citizen you want to have uh, a passport that allows you to travel to 180 200 something countries in the world then you ask yourself, what does this dream life demand of me in the present? And I have discovered that work ethic is more important than people make it, okay? So you take a look at each line of your dream lifestyle canvas and write down your thoughts. What can I commit to today that gets me closer to my ideal lifestyle? Okay, because the lifestyle is not just going to drop from heaven. You've got to make it happen. What seeds can I plant today to cultivate its foundation? what limiting beliefs about work and money do i need to overcome to embrace this lifestyle to bridge the current gap between my current reality and then my lifestyle what skill and knowledge can i start investing in today so these are very important questions that you should bear in mind every single day during the financial fitness challenge finally you need to set your intentions for this challenge when you think about the word intention what comes to your mind now I love this definition. Intention is the invisible engine that turns thoughts into reality. Wow. Wow. So you've been having thoughts or you have this dream lifestyle that you've talked about. What turns it into reality is called intention. 
this is one of the most important words you should learn and one of the most important words you should teach your children. It turns thoughts into reality. It turns decisions into destiny and it turns hope into achievement. So intention is a critical key to the financial fitness challenge that we are doing in the next five days. All right. So and I want to end by telling you a story, a true story um, of intention. I was 43, I was broke, I had left Shell at the time and then lost all the family savings in two very bad scam investments. Okay, so I was without income, I had debt and I had three young children whose future was threatened by my frightening financial situation because I would go look at these children as they slept in their bed, you know, as I prayed over them, watched over them. And I said, these children didn't ask to be brought into the world, but I brought them now i was destitute i was financially ruined but am i just going to watch these children grow up to become nothing am i so that was the day i now uh, stood over them in that room as i was in their bedroom as i was looking at them uh, that midnight or 1 a.m because i usually go and bless all my children i still do even though they're adults living on their own right now but i still bless them as a priest in my family every single night so this particular night i was doing it as i watched you know as i watched these children and it's like so what befalls these children what kind of future befalls these children as a result of my financial destitution at the moment was i just going to fold my hands and then let these children waste and become problems in the world at that time they were in their uh, still in primary school and um, i think one was in secondary school at the time and then i made a resolve standing over them i said i called their names one after the other and i said three words whatever it takes now that whatever it takes was the intention that drove me to sell homemade juices i made juices and smoothies and sold by the corner of the street i sold coffee organo gold from the boot of the car to people why it's not because i wanted to sell by the street is because I had made an intention, set an intention that whatever it takes, these children were going to be, um, they were going to become what we originally planned that they would become. So you have to be that mad at your financial frustration. Okay. So intention is more than just wanting something. You've got to, it's got to be focused alignment with your thoughts. You've got to commit to the energy and direction required to make it happen. And I'm emphasizing this because you have to set an intention for these five days and beyond. You have to set an intention for your finances before anything can change. If you're handling it casually, I'm telling you, nothing will change. How do you access intention? Intention must have clarity. It must have commitment and it must have the element of action. And then to just get you started, because you're going to start set your intention right now. What difference will earning $1,000 a day make in your life? Think about it. Think about it. What difference will earning $1,000 day, $1, a day make in your life currently? All right. So I have my own example. And then the question is, is it worth it? Is it worth it? So this is where we we end the lecture now you are going to receive a worksheet that allows you to collect your thoughts and put your thoughts together around intentions around what we are here to do so take a moment right now and fill that worksheet don't stress over it it's not a phd thesis don't stress over it because it's something you can still rework and continue to work on even as we go on so i'm going to see you in the next video